Let's have a quick chat about what I consider to be the best summer astrophotography targets. Now, as usual, this will be focused on the Northern Hemisphere because that's where I live, but a couple of these can actually be imaged from the Southern Hemisphere. So if you're watching this from Australia, then g'day, I hope you find this video useful too. There's something for all focal lengths here. The great thing about the summer sky is the sheer amount of nebulae that there is to image, and they're often quite close together, which means if you are using a wide field kit, maybe a 135 millimeter lens or a small refractor, you can often get two objects in the same field of view at once. Or if your equipment has a longer focal length, then you can just isolate the one target and focus on that or create a mosaic if that's what you're into. Comment down below your favorite summer astrophotography targets and let's jump right into my list, starting with number one and that is the North American Nebula. The North American Nebula sits in the constellation Cygnus which you'll find is an absolute gold mine of summer astrophotography targets as we go through this video. If you want some great Milky Way shots with some deep sky objects thrown in there for good measure then just point your camera towards Cygnus and you'll get some incredible Milky Way shots. If you're using wide field equipment then you'll also be able to get the Pelican Nebula into the field of view alongside the North American Nebula. If you're using longer focal length then you'll probably have to choose between one or the other and if you've got a really long focal length then perhaps focus just on the Cygnus wall part of the North American nebula because the nebulosity around that part of the sky is absolutely incredible. To locate the North America and Pelican nebula just find the constellation Cygnus in the sky and look for the bright star Deneb which you'll see in Stellarium now. It's a really bright star in the sky you can't miss it. If you can find Deneb then you can find the North America and Pelican nebulae from there because if you're using wide field equipment if you take an image of Deneb then you'll probably have the North America or Pelican Nebula in your field of view anyway so you can then just frame up the target as you want to from there. So number one covered two nebulae and number two actually covers three nebulae so while we're only at number two we're actually covering five nebulae already and I've still got three more to go on this list. So number two on the list is the Veil Nebula. Now that includes the East and West Veil Nebula and Pickering's Triangle. If you've got wide field equipment such as a William Optics Red Cat or a 135mm lens then you're probably going to be able to fit all three of those targets within one field of view and that will make for an absolutely incredible image. The Veil Nebula is also located in the constellation of Cygnus and it's more towards the southern part of the constellation. Now the thing about the Veil Nebula is that that part of the sky is full of really bright stars so it can be quite a difficult uh, target to process but it's one of my favourite summer targets. The detail that you can pull out of the nebulae is absolutely incredible and I'm hoping to be able to take a wide field shot with all three of them in the field of view this year. Okay number three on the list is the Crescent Nebula located in the constellation of Cygnus, you guessed it. It's just next to the really bright star Seder and actually if you just point your camera with any lens, 14 millimeter, 50, 135, it doesn't matter, or your telescope, just point your equipment at the bright star Seder and the Seder region is absolutely full of nebulosity. You you can't go wrong. But the Crescent Nebula is a specific deep sky object located next to the bright star of Seder, but there's so much nebulosity around that area of the sky as I say that you just can't go wrong with this image. Which again makes for either a really nice mosaic if you've got a longer field of view or if you're using really wide field equipment then you'll have the Crescent Nebula in there with the Star Seder and you'll have all of this amazing nebulosity around it and it'll be absolutely incredible. Okay moving on to the last two although it's actually three targets on this list um, now I can't actually image these targets from my location because they're generally too low on the horizon unless I had a really unobstructed view of the southern sky to the horizon. However I include them in this list because they are amazing targets and I love it when people share their pictures of these targets. So number four on the list is the Lagoon Nebula and I'm going to include the Triffid Nebula here as well for the simple reason being that again if you've got wide field equipment you'll be able to get both targets in the same field of view. Now when I say wide field if, if you've got a three inch refractor and even a crop sensor DSLR you will be able to fit both of these targets in the field of view. So you could actually have a longer focal length telescope and a full frame sensor camera and you'll still be able to fit both targets in the field of view. So I say wide field, but actually it doesn't need to be that wide field to fit them both in the field of view. Now you'll find the Lagoon and Triffid Nebulae located in the constellation of 
Sagittarius, it's not Cygnus anymore. We've moved on from Cygnus, unfortunately. It's a summer favourite for many. Like I say, I've never imaged it, but I love seeing other people's images once they've shared it. And you can image these targets from the Southern Hemisphere as well. So that is a bonus for anyone watching this video in the Southern Hemisphere. And finally on the list, we have the Eagle Nebula, which has kind of been made infamous with the Hubble image of the Pillars of Creation, which is located in the Eagle Nebula. So in the constellation of Serpents, again, I can't image this from my back garden, but I am very jealous of all of you that can. This is another target that you'll also be able to image from the Southern Hemisphere. And one day I'd love to be able to take an image of the Eagle Nebula and compare a shot of the Pillars of Creation with my pretty cheap, in terms of astrophotography anyway, equipment that I have compared to Hubble. And I know it's a ridiculous comparison to make, but I would just love to see the difference between the two. Now you might want a slightly longer focal length for the Eagle Nebula, particularly if you're really wanting to pull out a lot of data from the Pillars of Creation, because that will be really small in the field of view. So you might want a really long focal length for that in particular. But as I'm saying this out loud, I now realize that if you have a wide field equipment again then actually you probably be able to fit the Omega Nebula in there as well and I will add a screenshot of Stellarium now if you can do that. So there you go that was a list of five but actually more like a list of probably about ten so um, you're welcome. Did your favourite target make the list? Let me know down in the comments below if it did or didn't. Um, give me a shout out for what your favourite astrophotography target is for the summer. Don't forget to uh, like, comment, share, subscribe if you feel like it to the channel and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.